What up dudes, it's Gaz and welcome back to the Warframe video. Today we're going over Garuda Prime. She's finally out and I have been a long-term Garuda fan so we're going to be making this a how to play Garuda video in addition to just showing what builds and weapons I like to use on Garuda Prime. Uh, before we get into it, make sure you're subbed to the channel and all that stuff, make sure you hit that like button. Uh, like in the video, let more people see these videos and I really do appreciate any support you guys provide to the channel. Okay, so this Garuda rework uh, is basically stapled together with the Garuda Prime uh, release. And she got some really big buffs. We went over some of the changes to her stats in the previous video on like the Red Crit Claws and all that. Guys, the Red Crit Claws are so crazy. Like seriously, you can one-shot Steel Path Acolytes uh, it, just with one punch. There are, and Demolist too. That's a Demolist. One punch, he's dead. The Steel Path, where the enemies are like multiplied health and armor and all that. So... Yeah, we're going to show you how to do that with no Riven and all those things. But let's first go over how all of her abilities work. Um, if you if you want to skip over this part, you know how to play Garuda or whatever, or you already know literally everything about her, go for it. So, let's start off with her passive. Her passive has been... If you played a while ago and you haven't played in, in like the last year, she is very different now. Now her passive is every uh, kill you get will give you increased damage for your abilities and weapons. 5% increased damage per kill. So I killed three enemies there. I have 15% increased damage, as you can see right here. This will also count for assists. So if I shoot the enemy and my teammate blows them up with a Kuvazar, I'm still going to get credit for that and get that 5%. But as you can see, after five seconds of not killing any enemies, it will start to drain uh, by, I think it's like 1% or 2% every two seconds. Unlike some buffs like Roar... Uh, and like things like that. This this damage buff does not apply twice to damage over time. We have tested this on stream. Um, it's but it is still really good. You can basically just consider it double damage if you have the passive fully stacked up. It makes weapons that have really high base damage, like the Corinth Prime, the Kuvazar, uh, really like whatever weapon you you feel like. It makes them a lot stronger. They they hit a lot harder once your passive is fully stacked up, and it's it's probably one of the best passives in the game. Just because you need to just kill enemies. I mean, what are you doing playing Warframe? This is not Peace Frame, as we've gone over in the past. This is Warframe. You're blowing up Grenier left and right. Your Panzer Cat's probably blowing up enemies too. So this is a very good passive, and it does work on her abilities that deal damage as well. It does not seem to work on Helminth abilities, though. So if you subsumed, like, Thermal Thunder from Gauss, this passive should not be buffing that ability. Um, but it will work on, like, her Bleeding Talents and all that. All right, moving on to the first actual ability. Uh, her, her passive is really, really good now, so definitely give it a shot. Her first actual ability is called Dread Mirror. What Dread Mirror is going to do is that you need to first target an enemy. Depending on how much range you have, you might not be able to target an enemy. So we have enough range to target that guy. Upon targeting an enemy with this ability, you will jump on top of them. That will, jumping on top of them will stun the enemy and knock them over, and it will do a brief stun for enemies in the area. You can recast this ability while it's active to refresh the duration of this shield. You knock them over, you get a shield and an orb from doing that. The orb is going to be a basically a mini nuke you can toss out by holding the button down that you use the, to cast the ability. It's got impact damage at base, but there's ways you can make it do toxin and viral damage. So, additionally, once you get that shield out of there, um, that, that shield is going to be invulnerable to enemy weapon fire, but it's only in a single spot that you're, you're facing at. So if I turned around, I'm not even moving, I'm looking this way, now the shield is behind me. A one-way directional shield, if you're positioning yourself right, can be very useful. But if you're like being very mobile, like I like to play Garuda, it, it can sometimes be a little bit lackluster. Um, not to mention this shield. Uh, if you have the shield, pr tossing out the orb will it give, gets rid of your shield. Enemies shooting at that shield will increase the damage number of the orb. But since it scales off of the enemy's health that you're pulling the... Uh, you know, the, the orb from, you can actually get some pretty good scaling damage with this, especially when combined with other abilities. One last thing before we get past this ability, there, there is a lot to it, to be honest. Um, you can, if you jump at an enemy that's 40% health or lower, it will instantly execute them, uh, and they will die. So, if you find enemies that are low health, just hunt them down, and you can even, like, that guy was 1% health. We were able to get the execute off before he died, so that's pretty nice there. Moving on to her second ability, um... It's, it's, this is the ability most, most people subsume off. If you know what the Helmet system is, uh, get rank 3 with the Necrolisk uh, Syndicate on Deimos and talk to the Sun NPC to get the uh, ability replacement thing, pretty much. This one's called Blood Altar. 
You target an enemy and you jump at them. It also depends how much range you have. When you jump on the enemy, they are stunned on your spikes. With Garuda Prime, these are golden spikes. Um, additionally, while you're charging at them, you are invincible during the charge. You can have up to three of these blood spike areas up. I forgot to mention the first ability, you're also invincible while diving as well, which is not super important. So this is a healing area that we are in with these enemies on the spikes. They, they cannot be damaged while they're on the spikes, but they will be taking damage over time from the ability itself. As you can, they can take status procs. If you target the enemy again with the ability button, they will come off the spikes and take a, a big chunk of damage. I think it's like a bleed over time or something like that. Um, so what this does is basically it makes it so you can heal yourself and allies in the area. There are certain things like Necromex and defense objectives that it does not work on because I, I, I'm not sure why. Magical Blood is apparently immersion breaking to DE. Um, so now that we have this, we can combine this with our third ability. So the first ability was the jump, get the mirror and the orb that we can throw out for damage and survivability. Second one is jump on the enemy, make a healing blood or era, uh, aura in the area. And the third one is we reduce, we cut our health in half. But what we get for that, for cutting our health in half, is we get some energy back. We're at 140 energy right now on full health. I use the third ability, and I get another, I get like 100 energy there. Now, we are getting healed by our Panzer Cat, so that's not normally what's supposed to happen. But what you can do between the healing of this ability, the second, and the third, you're healing over time, and you're cutting your health to get energy. You can have infinite energy and health with Garuda, which is why I normally don't even recommend to use the Arcane Energize uh, extremely expensive and powerful Arcane on her, because you have an infinite energy and health battery right here with your second and third ability. Like I said, you could definitely usually subsume off the second ability because it's just, it's a stationary healing thing. Like, it's mod blah by range, to, to be fair, but if you're not in this ring, you're not getting healed by the ability. So it's viewed as a pretty weak ability by many people uh, with niche use cases, to be honest. But yeah, this third ability, Bloodletting, it was recently buffed. Now it will remove uh, status, negative status effects from you when you cast it. Um, lots of ability casting with Garuda, which is why I'm going to highly recommend that you run the Natural Talent Cast Speed Increasing mod. Uh, to make it so you can just spam abilities faster, you know, just be jumping around the battlefield at max max speed. Um, that definitely necessary. Now, this ability that gives you your energy back for cutting your health, depending on how much you, the percentage of your health you sacrifice, it will dictate how much energy you're getting back. So if I use the ability, it's supposed to remove 50% of my maximum health at base. If I only have like 10% health left and I use the ability, it will not give me the full, I, I can't cheese it pretty much. Um, all right, so let's move on to the last ability here. And that is the one that most people know uh, Garuda 4 is her fourth ability, Seeking Talons. So this is the one where you charge up your Blood Blades and you release them. And they will damage enemies in the area. Those enemies are now debuffed by the Seeking Talons. If I shoot them with a weapon, they have a high chance to get a Slash proc that is bigger depending how strong the weapon was I hit it with. So if I hit them with this Corinth Prime Alt Fire Shot, doesn't usually have Slash built in, it can still proc Slash. That's pretty much what you want to look at it like. It just makes weapons do slash damage they don't normally do slash damage. As you see, I got annihilated. Um, and this is without our passive even stacked up. So that's pretty much what it is. Now there's some, some things that are like, you know, expert tips and tricks for this. You can use this ability while airborne to release it. You'll stay airborne. You can jump on an enemy while you are airborne with that fourth ability to just like be an airborne menace. Um, additionally, you can also like backflip and stuff while you're in this uh, ability to like reposition yourself. While you are charging up the the targeting ring, you are now invincible. As you can see in the top right corner, gray health. We cannot be damaged or killed in that state. Um, and you know, like this also, it does technically deal some. It's not really a nuke ability. It will nuke enemies like level 50, but it, it is more for the debuff than the actual damage of the ability itself when you use Seeking Talons. Um, at low levels, like I said, you can make it work. Um, but yeah, so now that we've gone over how you can play her, uh, like the whole like rotation is just like jump on the enemy, uh, you know, get your blood altar going to heal yourself, get your energy back, use your four if an enemy is too high health for you to kill right away, uh, and then just you know move on from there. That's the general just how to play her. Now let's go over some builds and what I'd recommend to you um, for the way the game is played. So you saw that that one shot of the demolist at the beginning of the video. Here's the build that I'm going to recommend to you for doing that. It's a heavy attack build. So how this works um, is that. When you are playing Garuda Prime, this is for Prime specifically, and you don't have a normal melee weapon equipped in this slot, you go up to, all the way to the top, you click None, then you get access to the special Garuda Prime melee weapon talents. These have some of the highest base sets of any weapon in the entire game, and with a build like this, you're getting red crit, like, doom punches 
nearly all the time. Now, if you are to be running this build, I would recommend that you go with Zenerec Focus School for the heavy attack efficiency. What that means is when you do a heavy attack, you will not lose all of your combo multiplier at once. With Zenerec and Reflex Coil, you will lose 22 combo hits per heavy attack. So let's build it up here. We're running Quickening to get our combo back quickly. I think 9x should be enough. Super, Death, Slash, Punch, 575,000. Not even fully stacked. 666,000. And, you know, this is all with no ribbon. So you can definitely see... Actually, this thing can't get ribbons. I say it with no ribbon, but you can't even get ribbons for this thing. So that's one of the builds. Heavy attack build, 12x. Um, Blood Rush for uh, just getting huge crit chance. Quickening to make it so you attack quickly and get your combo count up higher. Uh, Smite Grenier is for when you're fighting specific factions, makes your slash proc stronger. Um, Sacrificial Steel and Sacrificial Pressure gives you more crit chance and more damage, especially good for heavy attacks. Um, and reach for just more reach and hitting things. Now, the, that's a heavy attack build. I like the light attack build more, uh, and this is a red crit light attack build with slash focusing. So we've got Blood Rush, Condition Overload, Weeping Wounds, some of the best mods in the game still. Uh, and since this thing has such high slash winning, you will be getting lots of slash procs with this. Um, additionally, this was tested on stream by us. This is a visual glitch. It says the Glander might... Uh, Set bonus doesn't work on her talons. It does. And here's what we'll show you right here. This thing has 35% base crit chance, and there's no blood rush in this build. If if Glider, Glider mods were working on this, it will show us orange crits after some combo multipliers. So we'll do a quick show of that, and then we will start showing the builds and some steel path gameplay of what you can expect. By the way, this is the Garuda Prime Ephemera. When you are near enemies, it disappears. So that is kind of annoying. <laughs> All right, so 35% base crit. Let's get that combo multiplier up, and you will see some orange crits. Uh, it's just, it's a visual glitch, guys. They, they, they're supposed to, they're supposed to say that they work. As you can see, orange crits right there. There is no reason that we would not get, we would be getting orange crits. Uh, this is a no mod, no Avenger setup on the Garuda frame itself. So, it, as you can see, orange crits. Not a lot of them, but some orange crits nonetheless. It does work, and, uh, yeah, Blood Rush also works, as does Weeping Wounds, so... Let's just, let's just go back, and I'm going to show you all the stuff I'm going to recommend to you. And I do have six different Garuda builds. Also, this is a, an alt, uh, a variant of the uh, light attack build with more red crit potential. But I, this one probably works better. So, as far as Garuda herself, like I said, it is v most people view her second ability, Blood Altar, to be a weak skill. And this is me on my maximum laziness tank build. It does not get much lazier than this. So what we're utilizing on this setup right here is we are using Combat Discipline and Arcane Avenger and also Arcane Agility. Qu credit to Quiet Canary for giving me this idea. So what this Arcane does, on damaged, 60% chance for 60% parkour velocity for 18 seconds. On damage, so you have to get shot. Or if you're being smart like us, you can use a Combat Discipline or a mod. You will take 10 damage when you kill an enemy. Uh, and you'll technically heal your allies too. So we we kill an enemy. We don't even need to get shot. We're triggering Arcan Avenger, which gives us incre increased crit chance, and we're also triggering Arcan Agility, which gives us massively increased movement speed. If you look at the options that you have for parkour velocity, for example, this one, Lightning Dash, 24% uh, increased the bullet jump and aim glide, stuff like that. I'm not sure how the exact math of this works, but that says 24. This one says 60. So is, is, that, is that pretty much three Lightning Dashes in one? Either way, if you don't want to run more speed, you can run Arcane Grace in this slot to get some more healing. But we are actually using Gloom from Sevagoth. If you don't have Gloom from Sevagoth, I am going to link a video down below on how to get him the easiest and fastest way possible. Uh, you basically sacrifice Sevagoth to the Helmuth ability uh, chair, and it will let you take the ability off of your Sevagoth you sacrificed and put it on Garuda, which is a, this is a big upgrade for Garuda as it will slow enemies down, and it will also, you know, while they're getting... Either stunned by your, your slash proc talons, maybe you have a, a fire weapon that's knocking them over. This will make the animation slower, and they will also let you get healed. You get lifesteal in the area. So, everything tank basically doesn't get any more tanky than this, unless you were, like, shield getting cheesing or something like that. But I don't normally recommend that, because I find the play style a little bit uh, boring. But yeah, we've got triple Umbra. So, an Umbra Forma on Garuda Prime, making it so we have Umbra Intensify. You don't need too much power strength. The base status chance of your fourth ability is 75%. So, for, like... Barely any power strength at all. You'll get to 100. Going over 100 doesn't do anything with this ability. Um, but the things you're modding for power strength on are, are relatively limited. Uh, you get like a better multiplier on your first ability. Like when you grab the orb out of their body, you'll get more slow percentage on Gloom, which is not even a big deal. 
And bloodletting is literally not affected by strength at all. It's actually affected by efficiency. So I'd, I personally would not recommend running Blind Rage on Garuda unless you want to like spam this ability a lot. Which, if you are, I consider Natural Talent a staple mod on this frame. Um, just because you are casting so many abilities, and I, I consider her abilities very slow to cast. I know that some of these mods aren't fully ranked up. Um, this build is not exactly doable. Uh, you might need to put another Umber Form on here if you want to max out these mods, to be honest. So, um, you've also got a Blood Forge build right here with her Augment mod. Um, this is probably more up your alley if you're a shield-getting person, um, where reloading your weapon, uh, your, your weapon is instantly reloaded when you cast her third ability, the Bloodletting, which will remove status effects, give you energy. Uh, this is good with AoE weapons and stuff like that. Um, but we're just going to stick with this for now, just so I can show you how that works. This is the build that you will see in the gameplay footage as well. And as far as weapons, you want to have things that hit really hard. Uh, one of my favorites is the Corinth Prime. As we are utilizing uh, Arkan Avenger, we can make the secondary shot in the Corinth Prime, uh, which has one of the highest base damages in the entire game. Uh, it can make it crit and do Hunter Munitions on a weapon that has, like, I think 4% crit chance. So we actually get to, like, 50% crit chance in the Corinth Prime alt fire when everything's said and done. Uh, so that's something you could do. Um, other things, as I know a lot of people like the Tenant Envoy on her. I like the Ogress as well. Nearly any, because you just give the weapon double damage. I mean, you can make nearly any weapon work. Uh, the Kuva, Kuva Shakur for really high level enemies. Kuva Brahma, of course, for blowing up everyone. Uh, Kuva Zar, instant reload, that whole magazine with Blood Forge, really, really good. Uh, it's basically whatever weapon you want to utilize here, it can be very, very powerful. Um, but like I said, I like the Corinth Prime. It's got nice sound effects. It's got uh, you know, pretty good AoE, really high base damage. The primary shot is crit focus, so you can actually get hilarious numbers, especially with the double damage, so... Yeah, and then there's also the Kuva New Core. As the normal build I am utilizing is a Condition Overload build. A Condition Overload priming weapon like the Kuva New Core is just what I'm looking for. So we've got Viral, Magnetic, Radiation, Heat, and then the Kuva New Core has a hidden status effect called Microwave that will also work for Condition Overload as well. So we get lots of extra damage on our Garuda Talons. And yeah, as far as focus schools, like I said, if you're doing a heavy attack build, I'm going to recommend Zenerik. Now, we don't know what's going to happen with the Focus Rework yet. They might end up removing uh, this inner, inner Might node, which gives you increased heavy attack efficiency by 60%. Like I said, stack that with, like, inner, uh, st stack that with like Focus Energy or Reflex Coil. You get 90% heavy attack efficiency, which is what it caps out at. And you will only lose 20 combo hits per heavy attack, which will be very nice for continued uh, heavy attack usage. Um, I usually run Naramon, though, because I'm doing light attacks most of the time. I find them more fun. And, you know, we have nearly endless... Yeah, this is the one right here. Melee combo counter now decays while out of combat by five every few seconds instead of instantly being depleted. This lets you just have your combo forever. If you also notice on our weapons, we're running the Arcane Primary Dexterity, which gives us increased combo duration for our melee. Um, also holster speed and stuff like that. And we're also running uh, Secondary Dexterity on our Kuva Nucor, giving us 15... We have, I think, 20 second total combo duration... Uh, on our claws. So, but honestly, any focus tree will be fine here. I've found success with nearly every one. Uh, Matarai for increased elemental damage and physical damage. To keep in mind, the elemental damage increase and physical damage increase from Matarai does not apply to damage over time, which is why I ultimately started, I decided not to do it. But you can definitely still get big damage out of this. Um, Vazarin is an oldie but a goodie. Now, the fact that Garuda doesn't need to be low health anymore kind of made me not want to run Matter uh, Vazarin as much anymore. But it is still, you know, invincibility if you are spamming it all the time. The Vazarin dash. So, really, guys, any focus tree you want. Um, Uniru is going to be getting reworked uh, with Angels of Zeramon like all the other focus trees. So, maybe it will be, you know... I think it's going to have, like, Prime Sure Footed built in. So if you don't have Prime Sure Footed, Uniru might be a really good call, as she doesn't need Zenerek Energy Regen. You don't even need Arcan Energize. That's why we're running Agility and Avenger. Um, and you really have lots of options. So it's, it's, it's a fun frame that you can... You know, you don't have to have all the meta gear. You can use off-meta stuff and find good success on the Steel Path, even for normal missions. Um, like I said, her 4 is really not a nuke skill. It's more of a debuff skill. But for the Star Chart, it is a nuke skill. A slow nuke skill, but a nuke skill nonetheless. Um... So, just moving on past that. Um, so I've, I've heard some people trying to say that there's some, like, hidden buff for Garuda Prime's talons where it shoots out, like, a heavy attack shockwave and it has, like, increased range or something like that. I hate to break your bubble or burst your bubble, but we actually tested that shockwave heavy attack on stream and it's, it's purely visual. The Garuda Prime uh, heavy attack range and the Gruda normal heavy attack range is exactly the same, guys. Even if it visually looks different, they are exactly the same. They have the same range of 5.2 with prime reach. 
They'll sometimes hit a little bit uh, further than just because of the animations and how these things work. It does not have an actual shockwave launcher. It would be really cool if it did because honestly, these heavy attacks have a little bit of a wonky hitbox sometimes, but it is not the case. I, I, I'm unfortunately the bearer of bad news here. Um, but yeah, as far as like, you know, weapons you could run, I usually run the Strofa on, on Gruda, but these Gruda Prime Talons got buffed so much that I'm going to probably just be sticking with her Talons themselves. Because, I mean, this is such a powerful melee weapon, might as well use it when you're on the only frame in the game that actually can equip them. So, um, yeah. As far as would I recommend Garuda Prime to you, I would. Um, but at the same time, it, if you watch my Gloom Neja video from, like, months ago, and you're looking to try to get in the Steel Path, that's pretty good for the Steel Path still. Now, unlike that Gloom Neja video, you don't even need any weapons, really, to make this work, although I really would recommend it. You can clear the entire Steel Path uh, by using her 4 and her 1, by the way, her 4 does work on Acolytes. The Slash debuff will work on Acolytes and make them take big Slash procs. Um, not sure it works on Demolus, but you can just one-shot Demolus with your claws anyway, so who even cares? Um, and, oh yeah, so uh, some other things. For the Garuda Prime Talons themselves, there are three stances to choose from. There's Vermilion Storm, there's Malicious Raptor, and then there's four Riders. My, my advice to you is to choose between either Malicious Raptor or Vermilion Storm. Four Raptors has never, or four Riders has never felt very good to me personally, um, as someone that has tried them all out. Uh, so what you're looking at between Malicious Raptor and Vermilion Storm. By the way, the gameplay footage you see on screen now, this is Vermilion Storm. Vermilion Storm has a lot more like you know sweeping arcs around you, more for multi-target hitting. I would, I personally view Malicious Raptor as more of a single target type of stance where it's like. The enemy is up in your face. You're not really caring about enemies to the sides of you. Not spinning around like Vermilion Storm. It's like you are killing that one enemy in front of you, and that's the only enemy you really care about. You're going to move on to the next one after that one's done being dead. So Vermilion Storm probably is better for most people, uh, but I like Malicious Raptor more. But I, I switch between the two. And Four Riders, it just feels bad. So I wouldn't even recommend Four Riders, honestly. Um, and here comes the Acolyte. I think this is a Light Attack build we have on, in here, but you can still kill Acolytes with Light Attack build very easily with Garuda. Um... Yeah. Remember, the Acolytes are immune to viral procs, so you can't really hit them with a Kuba Nucor to make them take more multiplicative damage. So, let's see. Uh, we didn't use the Korath, did we? We did a couple light attacks, and they're done for. Um, yeah, really, really strong. Uh, any weapon will do. Like I said, I've used a Nataruk with Garuda Prime. That's been pretty powerful. I've used, uh, you know, Ignis Wraith, Amprex, Verma Splicer. You, you name it, I've probably tried that out, so... That's pretty much it for the video. Hopefully you guys find it helpful. Hopefully you feel like a better Garuda player after this. And we're going to briefly just show the, the combo I didn't show at the beginning of the video here. So since we've got some, you know, some power strength now, we have 100% bleed chance on our fourth ability. Here's what you can do if you want to like, not even use weapons. You're going to hit them with your four. You're going to grab an enemy with high health in the area, so heavy gunner. And then we're going to throw the orb at all these guys affected by our four. As it is scaling off of their maximum health, it will cause a slash proc that is... Very, very good. And, like, honestly, you can see huge numbers with this with this frame. Um, I'm not even trying to go for max damage numbers right now. And here's, here's a agility. We basically move at, like, mega speed. You are speedy, dude, with uh, Arcan Agility proc. So I highly do recommend trying that one out. Um, as you know, this frame is not the fastest. Like, there's no real speed abilities on her. But when you put agility on, you are a speed frame. So that's pretty fun. Um, but remember, you, you will... Be, you will need to be running combat discipline to make that work without getting shot, actually. So, make sure you like that video if you guys enjoyed it. I will see you next time. I did put a good amount of work into this, so it's because I, it's a frame I really like, and I, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video as well. Take it easy. Peace.